Hello, my name is Kevin Constant. I'm with Topeka Electric Motor here in Topeka, Kansas. Today we are going to talk about a little test we kind of made up uh, about shaft voltage versus bearing voltages. And we're able to do this uh, with our little motor that we had designed. We disassembled the motor and overboard both end bells and inserted Delron bushings into them. Then they was machined back to bearing fit. There was a wire that was soldered to the outer race of both bearings. That wire will then connect to the ground so you can measure high frequency current that passes through the bearings, or you can actually measure the amount of voltage that is in the bearing at the time. This was done both bearings. The reason why we had done the Delron bushings is so we could totally insulate or isolate the bearings from ground. So we could do end-to-end -end shaft current test or ground test or high frequency test to actually measure bearing parasitics or just many scenarios. You'll notice that the motor has many little different wires on it that are coming from the motor. We can hook voltmeters up to it. We have two brushes for a brush grounding system and we've got about four meters set up here so it might get a little confusing but uh, I'll do the best I can. First off we are going to run our motor on the frequency drive and we were going to get shaft voltages with and without grounding systems and the fluke here has the brush voltage system hooked up so we can actually measure the, the voltage on the shaft. This, this meter here is the opposite drive bearing. We're getting the voltage there. This is the drive bearing. And this here is a meter, and I am going to handheld touch the shaft to ground. I know out in the field you can't do that because it becomes kind of dangerous. But here on the test table, it's easy to do. And we will show that you don't always get the same reading with your shaft brush tester versus a meter touching the, the shaft to ground. The numbers will not be the same, but anyway. Okay, so we're going to fire up the drive and I'm going to walk around front here so I can change start that thing back up as much as sleep. As you notice on the far meter back there basically have a hundred and fluctuate between 125 okay there it is settled in at 125 millivolt that's what we have on shaft voltage as you notice, the opposite drive bearing, which is right here, is 0.87 volt. The drive end bearing is 0.89 volt. That is without any shaft grounding. I am now going to hook up the shaft grounding system. As you notice, all readings do drop. The voltage reading on the shaft grounding test brush went to one millivolt from 125 millivolt. As you notice, we had 0.8 volt. Now we're at 0.3 volt on the opposite drive. The drive bearing is 0.2. My theory is, is with a shaft grounding system right here, we're reading from the brush out. We're not actually reading what is happening between the bearings through the stator, through the windings, all of that is internal to the motor between the two bearings. It does not make any difference whether you hook up the opposite grounding brush versus the brush that's on the drive end. I will now hook up the brush that's on the back. Instead of one millivolt, we have five millivolt. But you'll notice that the, the numbers is 0.3 and 0.2. It's still the same on the opposite drive as well as the drive bearing. I'm now going to show you what it looks like touching the shaft to ground. If you'll read that meter over there, it's 58 point or 55.8 millivolt. This meter has no resistance whatsoever to it. You touch the leads together and it will go down to 2.1 or it's 1.8 millivolt. 
There is no resistance in this. There is some resistance built into that brush. That is on the frequency drive. I'm now going to shut the frequency drive off. And I'm going to shut it off and make the connection to hook up the cool blue cores on the frequency drive. Restart the drive. We'll wait till the motor settles in at RPM because during startup under inrush voltages are higher internally in the motor and on the bearings. They will settle back in at about 0 0.8, 0 0.9 volt, which they have. You'll see that we have 0 0.20, 126, 127 millivolt on the shaft brush. We will now hook the shaft grounding brush back up. Our opposite drive is still at 0.3. Our drive bearing is still at 0.2. We will now check the shaft to ground. Whoops. And we're at 69 millivolt. That's what we're reading through the meter. So what the basis of our findings is, is we see very little difference by installing cool blue versus shaft grounding for the voltage part of this test. Remember, cool blue is only used for high frequency current, for bearing parasitics to help clean up the high frequency current on the ground wire. We have found little to no effect on voltage, but that shows us that voltage is not the issue. It's based on current. Our next test will prove this. I'm now going to shut the drive off. And I will hook up our static phase converter. It is now started. We are now running the motor with our static phase converter with no grounding system and you'll notice that our shaft grounding brush pickup is at 170 millivolt. That is on a static phase converter. Nobody in the market installs shaft grounding systems for motors that do not run on frequency drives. There's no need to it because that just proves our point that high frequency current is what causes damage. Even on three phase power, you still have shaft voltage. You can still take the brush and shut it out. You still end up with the one millivolt, the 0.2, the 0.3 on the bearings. You can still touch the shaft to ground. We have less millivolt reading on it because we have hooked up on three phase power. The point being, voltage is not the issue. It's the high frequency current and the EMI noise that is detrimental to the motor bearings and any driven equipment that is done with a conductive type element. And back to my point, you see that we still have 0.3 and 0.2 volt worth of voltage internally in the bearings. That's internally in the bearings. If this is the case, there's lots of organizations that recognize that 100 millivolt for deep groove ball bearings, 200 millivolt for sleeve bearings. They say that's when you need shaft grounding systems to help prevent bearing failure but nobody puts shaft grounding systems on a motor that is not on a VFD. Right here, our little motor still has more than the recommended allowable amounts 
running on three phase power. All motors have shaft voltage. So therein lies the, the rub. Shaft voltage is not the issue. It is current that is causing the problem. And this was just our little test. So I hope you enjoyed this and thank you much.